You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Monday. We are back after a uh, abbreviated week, but you know what? We're, we're working up to it. We're starting to get a little bit of things going. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I am your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire, through USA Today Sports Media Group. Group, Wow, that's where we're at. We are mispronouncing regular words. Anyway, uh, we got a big show for you. Uh, the second little bit more than half, two-thirds. We're going to bring on the guy that... I've talked about since 2018 when he was on Unknown. And that's Mr. Hassan Haskins. You know him. You love him. He So we're going to bring him on. And uh, it, in an interview that I literally just got done recording. So it's it's not like it's it's going to be spliced in a little bit if you're watching. Uh, but uh, got some good stuff uh, talking about Hassan's time at Michigan and preparation for the NFL and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to do that. But before we do... It's great to be a Michigan Wolverine uh, again against Ohio State after dropping the home game earlier in the year in February. Uh, Michigan gets revenge, and they do so without Hunter Dickinson. I mean, when Hunter Dickinson was announced just before the game saying, hey, yeah, guess what? He's not going. He, he can't go. He can't do it. Uh, stomach ailment. Every, you, you could feel the, the collective groan coming out of Ann Arbor. Right, it's like, oh man, this is not going to go well at all up against this generally red hot Ohio State team. But guess what? It did. And as much as Steve Lavin can go on afterwards and say, "Hey, Ohio State, you know they they uh, they had to prepare for life against Hunter, and it didn't, you know, they didn't have to face him, and that's uh, to Michigan's benefit." I I don't think it's to Michigan's benefit. I do. I now Anthony Wright said, "Hey, he's not completely wrong." I still think when you're without your best player, I mean, that just doesn't work. <laughs> you know, it's you, you, any, any time that you sit there and say, hey, they're going to be without, you prepared for their best player, but they're going to be without him. You're, you're probably going to take that 10 times out of 10. Uh, I like uh, what my best friend said about it today. He said, hey, and he said, I understand it's a stomach ailment, it's not the flu, but Ohio State's gone from complaining about their team having the flu to the other team having the flu. So, nonetheless, unbelievable game from Devontae Jones and Terrence Williams. Uh, need to see more from Caleb Houston. Really disappointed that he went over 10 from the floor. He had two steals, two rebounds. Uh, the steals, I mean, steals, was that was an incredible defense in that sense. 11 steals in the game. Uh, Ohio State turned the ball over twice as much as Michigan. And uh, that's exactly what you needed. Defense... I I sat there and had a little talking point saying, hey, the defense has got to be better. And then about uh, right right after halftime, I I was able to change that. Said defense not great in the first half, but woo boy in the second. They really figured out how to slow and stall them. Because, I mean, Ohio State went for long stretches without scoring, and Michigan managed to capitalize. So it'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. You got Indiana up next on Thursday morning. Uh, if you get past Indiana, then you got Illinois. You got a chance to finally, hopefully, get past, get over that hump, send Indi- uh, Illinois packing after uh, a spirited effort in the first game and a spirited effort mixed with a close finish in the second. If they could figure out what to do, then and you know Juwan's ready. Like I told you a couple days ago, I ran into Juwan at the bank, and he's he's like, I've been grinding, I have been grinding. So we will see what uh, what Juwan you know what Juwan has cooked up, mixed with uh, everything that's kind of been working for. Uh, but you hope that that the alternating wins and losses thing that that stops now because you don't want to lose to Indiana, a team that is considered as a first four out. But the good news is it seems like Michigan is in. You need to improve. You really hope they can improve their lot a little bit right now, though, because uh, they're projected as an 11 seed against LSU in the two places I looked, ESPN and uh, USA Today, the mothership for, for me. And uh, so you hope that they can find a way to uh, to improve their lot by winning. If they can not only beat Indiana, 
which I think that they, that probably won't improve their lot too much. But if they can beat Indiana and then beat Illinois and maybe another game, that would certainly get them up there a bit higher, get them their win-loss a lot better uh, than where they stand now. But nonetheless, it's, it's great to, to see Michigan basketball uh, take down a rival on the road. If you lose at home, you fe- feel like winning on the road is probably not going to happen, especially against a team as talented as Ohio State, and yet they did. So that's everything you want. All right, we're going to cut this sh- segment short so that we can get to Hassan Haskins because that is much, much more important. So before we do, listen, football might be over for the season, but basketball is full steam ahead for pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where to find the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, as well as UFC odds, as well as any kind of sports coverage information that you're looking for. So head to the website today. Use the mobile device to learn about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right. Also, I've told you a little something about something that we've uh, we have we're going to be using here, and that's run your pool because March Madness is only what like a week and a half away now. I mean, a week and a day away if you count. I, I'm not sure exactly when the first you know that first round starts, but you know. Anyway, that means you need to start thinking now about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Are you going for the usual or are you looking for the best? We've done our homework here, and we're running brackets with RunYourPool.com. Along with standard brackets, Run Your Pool offers game types like Survivor or Pick X. Both are really fun in their own way. They have options to edit scoring, and they offer more intel to make your picks, all stuff you won't find on ESPN or CBS. If you've got a business, Run Your Pool can help you take some of that madness magic and play alongside your employees or even gain customers. Plus, they offer full white glove customer support, custom branding, and one of the easiest three-minute setups you'll ever find. Clearly, we believe Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves. There's no truer test than that. While we'll have the Lockdown Wolverines one, we have the Grander, uh, which that one will probably be for Pride, maybe some some small something. I'll, I'll figure out something to give away. Uh, but there is also the Lockdown one. So if you want to play against us, the whole group for a shot at a cash prize, join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available there. So that's runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there. All right, and now we welcome on... The a guy that if you've been listening to the Lock On Wolverines podcast for any amount of time, and Hassan, you don't know this, but I have been raving about you well before you ever hit the field because one of your one of your ex coaches had told me uh, that when I asked, I said, "What's the state of the the running backs room before the 2018 bowl game?" And he said, "Hassan Haskins is the most physically gifted guy that we have." But that's him right there, that's, or that way. Hassan Haskins, former Michigan <laughs> running back. Super excited to have you, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for having me, you know, Hassan. Well, absolutely, man. I mean, we've, we've, gone, we've gone back quite a ways to back to that freshman year that you had. And uh, it's, uh, it's exciting to see the way that your career has grown from – from being a guy who was a running back and special teamer to a linebacker back to running back. And, uh, and then, and then kind of, you know, waiting your turn to see the field before you really stepped up and in. So kind of in a broad sense, what is this Michigan journey meant to you when you look back, start to finish? I mean, it, it uh, showed me who, who I was. You know, and um, like it, it's been a long road, you feel me? But it's a quick one. I'm, I'm not gonna lie; it came to an end kind of quick. But uh, yeah, it just taught me how to how to compete with other good players. You know, become a man, and just different things like that. You know, so it showed me a lot of a lot of different things that you know I know now. Now, the, I think about even I just this kind of came to to my memory just now. I remember I was on the field for the 2017 Michigan game at Indiana, and I was talking to uh, another, a different former Michigan staffer. 
and mm-hmm. he was in the recruiting department. And he, uh, I was asking, what's the state of your running backs? I know that you guys just are, you know, had, or you're, you're interested in this Hassan Haskins kid from Eureka, Missouri. And mm-hmm. he's like, listen, we are trying to keep that. So on the DL, because if anyone else figures out that we're in uh, onto him, they're going to see his tape and they're going to realize that this guy is absolutely incredible. And I mean, you proved them, you've, you've proved them right. You've made me look really good and over the years, which you're just now learning. Um, but nothing, yeah. n- nothing seemed more special than what's happened over the last year. Uh, what, what, what is it? What was it like for you to, to, to endure, you know, obviously all, all the hardships kind of splitting time. I mean, you still split time, but you know, yeah. like it, it just, uh, not really getting a, a foothold on the starter position, uh, back when Zach Charbonnet was around and all of that to finally kind of breaking through and having the season that you just had. I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a difficult road, you know, and, um, I just had to play my part, you know, just keep, like I said, keep competing with every, with everybody, you know, we got a lot of good players, you know, and, uh, it just felt good this, this past season to get more carries, you know, get more opportunities and just show, show the world what I can do. And, uh, so it's, it's definitely been a blessing this whole, whole year, whole past season, you know. What were the, what were your top highlights? I mean, I think I can guess a lot of them, but what were your top highlights for this season? Uh, definitely number one, uh, Ohio State game. You know, I, that's that's the top of the list. You know, um, that that game was just amazing. You know, the atmosphere and it's just everything about that game was was uh was amazing. You know, so I mean, just just that. You know, I don't even, I don't even want to say nothing else. Just that. <laughs> That was just the highlight of the, of the year. Well, I am disappointed that I wasn't down in the field specifically to get your hurdle. I, I say that as if I would have gotten it. You, I would have been like most of your hurdles far too close. Uh, uh, save, save for that Nebraska one. I got you, got you good on the Nebraska one, but that's about it. Yeah, that was that was a nice one too. You know, one of my favorites. What? Was that? Uh, I, I remember you because the first time I saw you hurdle was the 2019 game. Uh, against uh, Notre Dame, w- when did you realize you had that in your repertoire? Because it became, it felt like in the latter half of the season last year, like you know, a Hassan hurdles coming at some point. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's just something that I don't know. It's just I just did it. You know, I, I never like practiced it or anything like that. It was just instincts, and uh, yeah, I just leaped over them. You know, <laughs> first time in 2019, it was my first time. And uh, it felt good, you know. So I just had to keep keep bringing it out, you know. Put it, okay, so that's 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 there forever, you know. One of my favorite things was in that Indiana game this year. Was uh, you had a hurdle? Uh, of course, I I had my lens too tight. I had like the bottom half of you, so it was like not a good picture at all. But uh, later in the game, the Indiana guy, uh, I don't remember which running back it was. I think it was. Uh, I think it was uh, Chris Childers went to, went to do a hurdle and he just got hit by uh, one of the linebackers. What did you see? That was right right there along your sideline. Did you did you end up seeing that? Yeah, I I think I remember saying that. It's a couple people were like you trying to be like you out there. You, know, <laughs> you can't do that. But uh, yeah, I, I remember saying that. That was that was kind of funny. You know, seeing him do that. Now we, we talked about this last season and, and I'm sure it's the same answer, but I, I probably should have phrased it a little bit differently. Like w- when you look back on your, the entirety of your Michigan career, what, what, what's the, the moment that stands out the most to you and let's maybe like change it. And so it's not that like Ohio state thing, but like maybe it's something that's like that happened behind the scenes, something that really helped propel you to the, the spot that you're at to something that maybe that is pivotal that we wouldn't know about. Uh, man, I mean, it's, it's probably a couple, couple of different factors, you know, just, um, coach Hart coming in, uh, a little bit of myself, you know, but, um, uh, talking about coach Hart. Yeah. I mean, 
when I first met him and like I got to like talk to him and stuff like that, and I asked him like what I need to improve in my game, all he told me is just continue doing you, continue being you. You know, you don't, you don't need to change nothing. You know, you, you love playing this game, right? And uh, yeah, it just it just took off from there. You know, I just had to rethink about all my past situations and just even when I was younger. You know, when I'm from I'm from St. Louis. You know, the South Side, so it was a little a little rough. You know, and I just had to, like, rethink that and just, like, dig deep in my bag, you know, and just and just let it out on that field, you know. So it's just a little bit of, a little bit of, a couple of different factors, you know, that played in. And, uh, yeah, I just had to think, think, think deep, deep, you know, so. But, yeah. All right, so that was the first portion. Didn't exactly time it. <laughs> with Hassan, we are going to come back and talk to Hassan for a little bit longer. Uh, but uh, you know what? While I do love March Madness, I love those brackets. I can't remember the last time I actually went deep or even won any money. I'm hedging my bets this year with Stat Heroes NCAA Pick'em Contests. Listen, Stat Heroes NCAA Single Game Pick'em spits the star players against others in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage. Start focusing on the players you know best with game, with a gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads, long odds, or funky props. Stadio gives you the advantage, resulting in their gamers winning four times more often. Why? Because Stadio eliminates the mystery about who or what you're going up against. In addition to their pick'em games, they also have dozens of lineups you can comb through to take on head-to-head. They simply post sets of players for you to take on with a set of players that you choose. Stat Hero is the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fixed. The simple, sleek gameplay will have you playing in minutes. This is what Daily Fantasy was meant to be. So, uh, anyway, sign up for free right now. Stathero.com slash locked on. Use the, use the promo code locked on. Uh, for a 100% deposit match at stathero.com slash locked on. Use the promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on. Promo code locked on. Terms and conditions do apply. Also, got to tell you a little something about Built Bar. You all know how much I love Built Bar. I just got my box of white chocolate. Uh, yeah, white chocolate cookies and cream, and they're incredible. Uh, and here's the great thing if I get hungry and whatever, it's not going to do damage to my caloric intake because I'm trying to be at a caloric deficit every day except for today. Today's my cheat day. But if it wasn't, uh, that's the great thing. I can have two at a time, and it still doesn't bust it open. And if you don't know what Built Bar is, it's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Like I said, they're delicious. Uh, I could have two at a time, and that's still usually about 260 calories and 40 grams of protein. Try to get that in your metrics, you know, big 100 meal replacement bar that I used to go to. So I've bought dozens of boxes with my own money of my own volition. So join me on my crusade. Go to built.com, put in promo code LOCKED15. You can get 15% off your next order of Built Bar. That's built.com, promo code LOCKED15. All right, let's continue on with the Hassan Haskins interview already in progress. You've already saw part of it, listened to part of it. Here we go for the last part. Well, you certainly became a fan favorite over over the course of the last several years, and I think this year in particular, uh, it, it, it's going to be hard going into next year for fans to – to not see you on the field, at least in a Michigan uniform, that obviously we'll see you in the, on the field in an NFL uniform. We'll get to the NFL uh, and all of the preparation and all of that here momentarily. Uh, but before before we move on from Michigan, uh, you you all you know you were always very complimentary. I remember talking to you at the uh, at Big Ten Media Days in Indianapolis. It seems like you've been in Indianapolis constantly, uh, but. Uh, I remember talking to you, asking you about uh, Blake Corum and uh, Donovan Edwards, and and it, it really did seem like a running backs room that really banded together. Like the, it didn't seem like it was like a competition. And a lot of times, you know, we've seen over the years different position groups when there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of competition. Why is it that that you guys seem to just? It, it really felt like a brotherhood, thunder and lightning. And then you had Donovan Edwards, which was maybe like an, an additional storm to it. But why was it like that? I mean, it's, you know, we just had to buy in. You know, we all had to play our roles. And uh, we just we just talked among, among ourselves and just be like, you know, our roles, you know, we just anytime we get our chance to go out and, you know, prove, prove people that, you know, we the best 
running back group in the, in the in the nation, you know. And uh, yeah, we they like they like brothers to me. You know, we we are friends off the field as well, you know. And uh, that that definitely helps, you know. You had that bond with your teammates and just things like that. So you know, like I said, we had to buy in what the team team end goal was, and uh, you know, we wanted to win games. You know, that's all that's all we focused focused on, and uh, you know. We, we, we did a lot of that. Now, with that, that in mind, what, what do you foresee for the future? I know you were asked this at the Combine, but I'm going to ask you kind of again. What, what, uh, what do you foresee for the future for that Michigan running backs room uh, with, without you being a part of it, unfortunately? Man, it's, it's going to be special, like I was saying. I, I can't wait to see them uh, on that field. Uh, Blake, uh, Dino, and including uh, and Tavi, you know he's he's an up and coming, you know guy as well. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be something special. I'm not gonna lie. I just can't wait to see it. You know how they how they play out on that field. You know I know it's gonna be some some good games to watch. You know, so I'm just looking forward to see that. And we've seen a lot, obviously, of Blake over the the course of the last year, and a little bit of Donovan. I've seen probably a little bit more Donovan Edwards than, than many, not as much as you have, but I followed his uh, high school career for several years before he arrived at Michigan. Uh, is, what, what kind of player, what is, what is his potential that you've been able to see uh, that again, maybe, maybe people don't realize exactly what he's capable of. What, what do you think he's capable of? I mean, he got so many tools, tools in his bag. It's, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. You know, he, he's definitely a playmaker. He's going to get things started on that field, you know. And uh, like I said, I mean, he can pretty much do it all, you know. He, um, yeah, he's just he's just a guy that can get the get the get the, get the, uh, the dice rolling, you know. And uh, he, he's that guy that can, that can definitely do it, you know. Now let's move on to to where you're at now. Uh, not like literally, not where you're currently sitting, but what uh, what the uh, you, you've been you've been pre- you know preparing for the opportunity that you just had uh, this last this last week. Uh, I know you only participated in the bench press, but you also have a pro day coming up. W- yeah. What did you do like right right the moment that everything was? shut down in Miami gardens is new year's day. By the time that I think we all kind of left there. Uh, when you, when you walked out of Miami gardens, the hard rock stadium, what did you go do to start preparing? I mean, I talked to my ages, you know, uh, just came back to Michigan for like a couple of days, you know, and got to Texas, started training. Um, I had to see a couple of doctors for my for my ankle and my foot. You know, I had to get that get that right. Now, I'm still working on that, but uh, it's it's looking way way better than than what it what than what happened than what it was at first. But uh, you know, these past like month months, you know, it's been uh, it's been good. You know, working out, uh, running, lifting, you know, things like that. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of a lot of things. You know, so. Now you did you put up like we like we talked about in the pre show here there was uh you put up twenty seven in the bench press the most of any running back is that a num is that the number that you were hoping for did you exceed it did you i mean i mean you you hit a hit a number that we usually don't see from running backs i mean i was i was looking for a couple more <laughs> but it's it is what it is you know I feel like I could have did a couple couple more, you know, but uh, I, I ain't know how many, I ain't know how many, um, how many I had at first while I was doing it, you know, I'm going to keep, keep an count and, uh, you know, but it's all good. Though. 27 is a good, good number. So that know. it, that it is. I've, I've seen, I've seen other skill position players or position players have a lot less. Certainly the, everyone else had less than you. So that's obviously a good thing there. Uh, are you are you hoping that you're going to be able to to be a full go to be able to do the other drills at pro day when Michigan has its pro day? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I should be close to close to full go or you know full go, but I should be should be uh, doing everything at pro day. You know. Now you got so, to 
you got to do everything the the everything else that people get to to do at the the combine. You get to speak to a bunch of NFL teams. What's what's maybe the most interesting thing that came out of that for you? Was there some kind of weird question or interesting rapport you had with uh with any of the NFL people? Uh, I mean it was. It was just so, so many meetings. It's been it was some long days, you know. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, it was definitely interesting. Just just talking to all the different teams there and just just learning learning stuff, you know. Um, some teams you have like the same plays, but like just call it call it different. So it was just interesting just seeing, you know, seeing what was going on and how it worked, you know. And uh, yeah, it was it was it was cool though. A real real cool experience. I can't, I can't, um, uh, can't lie about that, you know. How how much do you feel that Michigan, your time in Ann Arbor, prepared you for that next level? I mean, if it wasn't for Michigan, I, w- I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be there. You know, so it prepared me a lot. You know, uh, it definitely helped out a lot, especially going to Michigan. You know, Michigan, it's a big, big school, big known school, you know, and uh, it definitely helped me. And uh, you know, I, I thank them, thank the whole university for that. You know, so. All right, man. Well, I won't. I won't keep you. I know you've got a lot going on. Uh, but uh, appreciate you joining us. And like I said, I anyone who's been listening to this podcast essentially since its inception has heard me absolutely be singing your praises. Uh, well before we ever even saw you on anything other than special teams. So it, it's awesome to have you as the first former player to join in uh from your class so much appreciated man thank you for even having me you know appreciate you all right so that'll do it so thank you so much to hassan haskins for joining the show i don't i can't think of an, a better uh a, 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 a better candidate to to be the first of this class to to join us is we've had not necessarily every class we don't necessarily get every guy uh to to come on but we've we've had probably a lot of 2016, 17 type representatives. Uh, but to, to get the first guy coming out of 2021, uh, that, that's really exciting. So thanks to Hassan. Uh, and we are going to tomorrow, I'm sure on Tuesday, we'll be talking a bit about Michigan football. I mean, they're taking a trip uh, to all around Michigan, they announced summer uh, of this year. So I'm sure we'll talk about that. We're meeting with Jim Harbaugh in the early afternoon so lots to talk about on Tuesday kind of feeling the actual spring ball that it's actually happening and has been happening super exciting anyway thank you for watching and or listening we'll be back soon talk to you then peace